This is kind of a correction. It's not really a correction because I technically wasn't wrong. But yesterday in my main segment, I talked about the migrant caravan storming the southern Mexican border and failing. The only thing was at the time I had produced the segment, news had broken after I'd already finished that I didn't see this, right? Hundreds of migrants forced their way across a river at Guatemala-Mexico border as 2,000 strong caravan tries to make its way to the U.S. in first major crossing since Mexico agreed to, uh, to help Trump stem the tide. So basically, I produced a segment. I recorded it. This news came out at 2 p.m. I published it at 4 p.m. That's my bed. It's just it's it, there's a certain level of impossibility in, in terms of how long it takes me to put together a segment, record it. I don't have a script or anything, but I do research a bunch of news. I record earlier because there's a lot of like, you know, the uploading process, tagging. It doesn't take too long, but there's just some back end stuff. And so by the time I'm done, I basically don't Google search updates. So that's my bed. I'll do better next time. But let's let's see the update. Basically, what I report yesterday was there's a new caravan. They estimate in the thousands, I think four, four or so thousand, and they made it to the southern Mexican border. Mexico's stopping them because Trump's been really strict. And I, and I made the joke. It's actually funny. Trump's not only strengthened our southern border, but Mexico's as well. Now, that's still true. That's why I'm saying it's not a total correction. But after they got stopped and pepper sprayed, a splinter group formed and they stormed through the river. Why isn't where are the images? What is it? There we go. They actually rushed down to the beach through the river and broke into Mexico. Now, here's the thing. I don't think it changes too much because Mexico has said they're, they're not going to allow these people to make it to the U.S. But let's read the story, see what's going on, and I'll you know, do my best to get you the information. The Daily Mail reports hundreds of Central American migrants forced their way across the Guatemalan border into Mexico on Monday after the Mexican government denied them free transit through the country to the United States southern border. A caravan of 2,000 migrants, mostly Hondurans, gathered before dawn Monday along the Rodolfo, Rodolfo Robles International Bridge spanning the Suchete River between Guatemala and Mexico. Hundreds were seen crossing the river into southern Mexico. Amid shouts and even some fireworks, they began wading across the shallow river. The migrants moved off the border bridge and toward the river after Mexican officials told them they would not be granted passage to the country. They actually stopped them and pepper sprayed a large, a large uh, portion of the group as they're trying to push through the police. According to AFP, Mexican security forces fired tear gas as the migrants attempted to flee to Mexico through the river's shallow waters. It is the first major caravan since the United States and Mexico agreed to work together to combat migrant crossings through the Mexico-Guatemala border. Mexican President Andre Manuel Lopez Obrador last summer pledged to help the U.S. curtail mass movements of migrants. U.S. President Donald Trump has threatened to punish Mexico and Central American countries economically if they fail to curb migrant flows, resulting in a series of agreements aimed at taking pressure off the United States. I got to say a couple things. First, Trump's policies, I think it's still fair to say, are working in that Mexico is actively trying to stop these 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 uh, groups of migrants. But I will also point out, they say it's Trump trying to uh, punish these countries economically, but the U.S. provides a ton of aid, right? Get this. If we're giving hundreds of millions of dollars to, say, Guatemala to help their people, but their people are still fleeing anyway, then perhaps it doesn't make sense for us to give them money if the people are leaving. You know what I mean? Like, imagine if someone was like, hey, I'm going to give you 10 bucks to buy your son pizza. And then you find out the kid left to his friend's house. You're like, well, I gave you that. Like, I'm, I'm not going to give you more money for pizza. Your kid left. You know what I mean? So I wouldn't I wouldn't call it punishing. I mean, it technically is because they use the programs to benefit their country and stuff like that. But if it's not enough to actually keep people there, then why bother giving them the aid to make the country better in the first place? We can see these photos. River wasn't that deep. It's only a couple feet deep. It looks like a lot of people just walked through, rushing across. Here are the photos. They say small groups of migrants managed to make their way into Mexico over the weekend, but security officials blocked other Central Americans who attempted to force their way through the border, leading to violent shoving at the crossing. According to Guatemala, at least 4,000 people have entered from Honduras since Wednesday, making for one of the biggest surges since three Central American governments signed agreements with the Trump administration obliging them to assume more of the responsibility for dealing with migrants. Guatemalan officials, with the assistance of U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement agents, placed about 400 migrants on buses and returned them to Honduras last week. So there are a bunch of lefties who were really angry when they found out that ICE was actually operating 
I, I, I guess we can call it extrajudicially, meaning outside of their, their actual jurisdiction. Although perhaps you could argue ICE can operate anywhere. I don't know. I don't know. I, it seems weird to me that ICE would be in a foreign country. I suppose that's what it is. We can see here the uh, military police in Mexico were guarding this bridge. This is crazy. One guy looks like he got tackled. Security forces offer aid demand moments after soldiers allegedly fired tear gas at a caravan of Central American migrants. This doesn't look like they're providing aid to the guy. It looks like they're tackling him. I don't know what this is. But um, we, we did see a report from a New York Times reporter that. This, this, so Reuters reported they were refusing to leave. The migrants were staying at the border and that a new group had formed. Uh, a second caravan. So I guess that's them rushing to the border, they say. However, the caravan of at least 2,000 migrants remained in the Guatemala board, Guatemalan border town of Tecun Uman and set off for Mexico en masse early on Monday, believing they stood a better chance of making progress in a large group. Oh, looks like we got video of this. As of Sunday, Mexican authorities have received 1,087 migrants into the states of Chiapas and Tabasco and set out various options to them in accordance with their migration status. There's a quote here to say, however, in the majority of cases, once the particular migration situation has been reviewed, assisted returns will be carried out to their countries of origin, assuming that this situation warrants it, the ministry said. So let me ask a question to all the progressive activists. If they're accusing Trump of being, you know, racist or bigoted because he's sending these people home, Mexico is doing the same thing. OK, so 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 what now? You know what I mean? It's like you can't really say Trump is unique in doing this. When Mexico is literally using their Southern guards and, and, and shield bashing people. Now, look, I say shield bash, calm down. It's, it's, it's true they are, but it's because they're being rushed. The military police are being rushed and they're using their shields to, 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 to push them back. But it is, you know, I don't know, a general shield bash. We have here is uh, Mexico and Guatemala. So the border actually look, looks like it's go, it actually goes east to west. And there's two cities in the borders. It's, it's, it's a typical thing. We can see uh, it says by dawn Monday, thousands of migrants made their way to Rodolfo Robles. We saw that. Here's another image. This is a massive group. So I, I want to point something out that I think really funny. I was talking to my friend about this. There was an article that basically said, oh, look, just in time for 2020, another migrant caravan. And the argument was that the news only covers this stuff when there's an election to profit the Republicans. And I'm like, dude, are you arguing that someone manufactured the caravans like Republicans are sending operatives down to Central America to advocate for these people to form groups. The reason this is in the news is because it's a massive group of thousands of people trying to storm through the southern border of Mexico. So the only other argument that I guess is that Republicans make the groups. Now, get out of here. That's insane. They say Mexico has so far controlled the border at Tacoon Oman more successfully than in late 2018 when a large caravan of migrants sought to break through there. Many later crossed into Mexico via the via the Suchiete River. It led to President Lopez Obrador agreeing to deploy the National Guard to the Guatemala-Mexico border after Trump threatened to levy taxes on, on imported goods if the immigrants weren't stopped. So that does sound more like a punishment for sure. The leftist leader's government on Friday offered migrants 4,000 jobs to work in the South. But those who do not accept it or seek asylum will not be issued safe conduct passes to the United States, the Interior Ministry said. A 23-year-old music composer who abandoned his native Honduras in search for better opportunities in America pleaded with Lopez Obrador and asked him to reconsider his government's approach to the migrant crisis. The authorities do not care about supporting young people's talent, buying books and notebooks for schools, for medicine or for hospitals. They worry about buying weapons and tear gas to repress the people. Yes, listen, there's a really funny post I saw that did not represent conservative arguments at all. But I always see these memes. You know, what's really funny about Reddit is that it, when, I, when I'm surfing on Reddit, it's almost always left or far left memes, nothing from conservatives. It used to be the other way around, and then Reddit started blocking people. What's funny is, I think it was the, um, the, the sweating guy with the two buttons, and it said, uh, rights, rights are granted by God, not the Constitution. And the other one was immigrants have, like, have no rights or something. And I'm like, dude, that, that's, that's literally not, and, and the guy was wearing a MAGA hat or something. Or no, no, his face said proud conservative. It is constitutional conservatism, that even non-citizens are protected by the Constitution. It is constitutional conservatism that the United States has a right to defend its borders from foreign, from threats, both foreign and domestic. So I don't know what the argument is supposed to be. No one is claiming immigrants have no right to free speech and, you know, uh, uh, you know, free expression or to bear arms or any of those things. We're saying in the United States that the government can't infringe upon those rights. Now, for me personally, I'm actually 
I, I think we should have, uh, uh, I don't know what the right word is for it. I don't want to say common sense gun reform. That's how they say it on the left, like the Democrats, but it's anything but. I think we need to reform our gun regulations, both in terms of reducing restrictions, but increasing our knowledge. So I, I, I've heard arguments for um, why we shouldn't do universal background checks. I think universal background checks and, or a gun registry, a lot of people were like un- unhappy with it. Now, I'm all for it, but I actually heard a really great point from a lot of people saying, then I want a speech registry. You know, I want you to register before you're allowed to speak in public and things like that. You see how one infringement, and I, and I recognize it's actually a good argument, right? I shouldn't have a right to curtail anyone else's, you know, guaranteed rights, or I shouldn't say guaranteed, but protected rights, uh, should my own then later be, you know, restricted as well. Long story short, if you want to affect someone's rights, you got to amend the constitution first, right? So, so I respect that. I respect that even though my opinion falls in a different position. Anyway, the point is, the reason I'm saying this is that we in the United States have a right to protect our borders from, from threats. And there, it's true, unknown individuals that we can't track may be carrying diseases. Yes, they may be violent criminals. They may be just general petty criminals. And we have a right to control, uh, protect our community and our borders. That's, a, that's, that's the right of self-defense. So sorry, it has nothing to do with the individuals who also have rights. They can speak whatever they want. They can care about as far as I'm concerned. But there are certain rights we have too. I'll leave it there. And I'm going to go, I'm, I'm going to segue this into the next segment about the CDC because this, this crazy new Chinese virus is going around. Everyone's freaking out. And now we have the first case in the US. That's a really good point about controlling our borders. So stick around. That segment's coming up in a few minutes and I will see you all shortly. <laughs> 